And you're doing press for Fargo season four. And also your learning disability. You seem to be doing I wasn't of- really, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, things come out, Neil. I give, I, I give I, the public me. I'm just, you know, and it's easier than apologizing to a lot of people individually. So you just, <laughs> just I was sick. You just do it over the airwaves. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I, I can get a little <laughs> of that. It was very satisfying for me for you to have a learning disability because. Um, careful, careful. No, it was very <laughs> satisfying for me because we would argue about your our different styles. Basically, I feel like I made you less cynical and you made me more cynical. <laughs> Meaning. I, I, have the, I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> on the world in some way. I have that effect on people. Um, and I would argue that I made you slightly, I made you realize that there is uh, value to feelings. It's not, I never didn't think there were value to feelings, <laughs> Neil. Uh, maybe you, there's value to my feelings? Maybe, yeah, there's value to, there's like your sort of gruff old exterior. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm always like, okay, I'm the head of the family, right? Right. So, you know, me and my kids. And, you know, sometimes I'm the boss at work more times than not. So my feelings don't matter in the overall pantheon of moving things forward. Right. You know, we can't slow down for my feelings. <laughs> Would you say that you found out that you kind of need to, though? I need to slow down individually, yes. But I will never inflict my feelings on others. But... <laughs> no, no, no. I th- but <laughs> I think like, you no. do. I think you, affl- you, infl- you inflicted your feelings on others by not addressing your feelings. So then you, I bet that the next time you run a thing or you run a, a, an organization, yeah, you'll be, it, your management style will be different than it was, would have been five years ago. Probably, probably a little bit from being uh, like it softer. Nah, I mean, it's weird. There's a bunch of jobs I won't even take just cause just producing things and directing things. Cause some of them, especially like like a nightly show or, you know, some, certain yeah. things just require an, an urgency. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you have to raise your voice when things get urgent. Yeah. Uh, but raising your voice is against the law now. <laughs> so I will not take the job. <laughs> I, will yes. go, I will politely pass and go, mm, okay. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and then you got to assess what piece of talent you're working with. So some people don't need to be pushed. You know, Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat does uh-huh. not need to be pushed. Yeah. But Tyler Hero might need a foot in his ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he yeah. might. <laughs> well, that's the thing about Riley is he's apparently like a real hard ass. Like, and practice. I didn't realize there's a Lakers book right. uh, called Showtime about the 80s Lakers. And he would practice the fuck out of them, which it would, I didn't know that. Well, he... The Miami Heat or the LA Pat Riley's teams are always the best conditioned teams yeah. in the league. They it's very rare those guys get tired. Like yeah. they are they're or like fat. Or I fat. guess Shaq was fat. They're like track stars. <laughs> right. Shaq was the one okay, he can yeah. be fat. Yeah, yeah. He can have a donut, but the rest <laughs> of you motherfuckers yeah. got to get this salad. Um, and that's exactly that's how you like my Pat Riley. That's impression. a good Pat Riley. Yeah. 